I was late to the game Bioshock. I picked it up used on the 360 a year or so after it came out. Everyone said it was an amazing game, so I figured, why not? After a couple hours of playing it, I put the controller down and wondered what the hell everyone was smoking. Despite an amazing introduction, this game was a clunky shooter that contained few, if any, of the RPG and storytelling elements that my friends raved about. So Bioshock collected dust. Months later, I was convinced to give the game a second chance, and put a couple additional hours into it. This changed everything. I became hooked to Bioshock for the next couple days, and upon finishing the game, I'd place it in my top 10 games for storytelling and narrative. I hoped I would never do the same thing and judge a game too early, but this is exactly what happened with Errol Wars. Developed by Gameville, Errol Wars is a unique strategy RPG game that brings a bit of variance to a genre that can definitely use some. The game is broken into about 40 stages, which are each very similar battles. On the left side of the screen is your base, and on the right side is the enemy. The goal of each level is to move your troops across one of two paths to attack the enemy's base. Because the enemy is attempting the same thing, your troops will meet in the battle and duke it out. There are numerous different units that are unlocked throughout the game, including infantry types, range types, and flying units. Within each of those categories, there is also a handful of individual types that vary in strength, attack distance, defense, and speed. With each passing stage, it becomes more and more important to analyze who your enemy is and adjust your army appropriately. You also have a hero, which you choose at the beginning of the game. Depending on which hero you choose will actually play one of three different storylines. All the storylines follow a similar plot about three warring factions, but each is different enough to want to go through the game again and again. This definitely helps with the replayability. Throughout the game, there are multiple upgrades, skills, and items that can be purchased using one of two different currencies. You can also create new types of soldiers by combining two of your current soldiers into one. This has varying degrees of effectiveness, and the result is not always the same, but you can create some powerful units by mixing your existing soldiers relatively early in the game. You can also unlock additional skill slots and items through the use of cash, which is the term for paid currency within the game. Yes, Errol Wars is a freemium game. The paid system in Errol Wars is actually fairly well implemented. Gold is tough to earn in the game, but it's possible. Cash, on the other hand, is very limited in quantity. If you want to buy some items that require cash, aside from what little the game gives you, be prepared to shell out about 5 or 10 bucks. The nice thing is that the game can be beat without ever spending a cent. Plan on grinding a decent amount to earn gold for unit upgrades and items if you don't want to pay for anything, but finishing the game is totally possible this way. I will say that this is not an easy game, but the mechanics are implemented in such a way that even grinding doesn't seem boring. The music is a pain point for all wars. Gameville still hasn't figured out how to loop music for Android games. This is actually a problem for many developers, however most devs choose to use longer audio tracks for music so the loop point isn't as salient. Gameville uses 5 to 10 second clips, which makes the cut and loop point a little distracting. The music style is also a little out of place. Sounding like something a guy in a garage wrote on his Casio in 1984, I didn't feel as though this engaged me in the fantasy the story was attempting to convey. The sound effects, by contrast, are solid. There's quite a varying amount of sounds depending on the units, and they're accurate. The one issue I did run into was when too many units flood the screen at once, the audio begins to cut out. I've even had the game suddenly close a couple of times due to this. The graphics are relatively standard for a 2D fantasy game. For some reason, and many may disagree with me, the art style reminded me quite a bit of Disgaea, a game that was released on PS2 and PSP and seen several sequels. All the units and heroes of the game look cartoony and unique, keeping the game relatively lighthearted. The biggest problem I ran into with Arrow Wars was the core game mechanic. Though there is a huge amount of diversity in the units available and the strategies to implement, the core game is extremely redundant. Every level is the exact same thing your base versus their base. The same two paths over and over again. This is definitely a case of having amazing depth in every ancillary part of the game and then missing the boat on the core functionality. The redeeming factor here is that Gameville did such a great job on all the little pieces of Arrow Wars that the game is still fun and engaging. I'd recommend this game for anyone that likes strategy games and or RPGs and is well versed in them. The story is decent and the gameplay is addicting. Building and refining armies is an engrossing experience and will grip fans of strategy games. Arrow Wars is a game for those looking for more than a distraction. Pixelfreak.com is giving Arrow Wars 89 pixels out of 100.